Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dermer again, and today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with ray tracing in Unity. Ray tracing is actually part of the HDRP, which is a high definition rendering pipeline, and I'm going to show you some of the cool things that you can do with it by just enabling a couple of features in Unity. The demo that you see playing behind the scenes include global illumination, contact shadows, recursive rendering, also ambient occlusion, and I'm also going to show you how Atom is actually reflected on the ray trace materials by using something called dynamic geometry. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so this is the demo that I have without any ray tracing on it. So if we hit play, you're gonna see that this is the default animation that Unity put together. You can see the characters in there, Adam coming in, and the there's a little bit of blur on the, on, on the camera. There's really no, it's not really focused. So I'm gonna show you how to change that. But Adam will get in and then the animation ends. So, I'm gonna show you how we can get these upgraded so that we can get ray tracing on. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to go into a window. Then if you go into window, go into rendering pipeline and then HD rendering pipeline wizard. If we go here, you're gonna have three different options. One of them is gonna be HDRP, which is just HDRP by itself. If you wanna use HDRP with VR, such as in the Oculus Rift, you can enable this option and then basically fix everything. And if you wanna use HDRP with ray tracing, this is what we're going to be using. So I'm gonna click on fix all. It's going to tell you that it's going to create a new HD default scene. It's gonna go ahead and create one, that's okay. And it's going to basically import and update everything that it needs in order for us to use ray tracing. I didn't have to change a lot of things. Everything just worked after the fact. It'll tell you also that you need to restart the editor. We'll just click on that, it'll restart it. All right, and we'll get a pop-up here, which is something that you didn't implement. I'm gonna click on X because we already have all the scenes loaded. And you can see that now everything is green, so it should be good to go. It has shadows loaded, everything is green there, static batching, a screen, a space, shadows. So let's go ahead and close that. All right, so now that we're here, I wanna show you also what packages you're gonna need. And we already have the package that we need, but I wanna make sure that you, you know what we're using. So if you look at the package that we're using right now, it's gonna be the high definition rendering pipeline version 8.2.0. Just make sure that you have that option because that's gonna be the one that we're going to be using for this video. So now that you know that, let's go ahead and jump into now enabling rain tracing. Okay, so we have this scene and it doesn't really have much going on other than Adam in there. So what I'm gonna do is I also want to add a couple more things. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone this. I wanna make this a little bit more fun. So it doesn't, you know, it just shows one of these props and we can have multiple. And I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and center on the pivot. And we just put it right, perhaps one right here. I'm gonna clone it one more time. And then we're gonna have it on the other side. We have this one perhaps right here. We'll just rotate it on the Y axis and then perhaps something like that. Okay, something like that works. And the other thing that I want you to look at is if we go into here, into the episode lighting. This is where all the lighting is gonna be. And then also the timeline is going to be on these other scenes. So there's three scenes for this demo. And then what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and make this a little smaller. And I wanna see Adam. So I'm also going to change the camera. So I'm gonna go into the camera here and then just go ahead and change the focal. Cause I wanna make sure that we, we don't have any blur. Cause I want you to see what I'm, what I'm basically doing. And now, you know, everything should be on focus. So I just change the value, the value to zero. Okay, so a couple of things, we're gonna be adding global illumination. So if you go into the lighting, we're gonna have, we already have a scene settings. And if you didn't have a volume, you can just go ahead and you know just search for volume and add a volume. This already has a volume and it has a procedural sky. So if I went to a check this, you're gonna see that we don't have a sky anymore, but if I enable it, we have a sky. And also the sky is this the basically assigned by using the visual environment component. So if I were to check this, it's gonna go away and now it just comes back and you can tell it whether you want, you want to use procedural sky or HDRI, which are gonna be, I'm gonna be showing you how to add. But these are not related to ray tracing. These are just part of the HDRP. So the ray tracing components are gonna be by clicking on R over right. If you click on that, you're gonna see ray tracing. And if you click on that, you're gonna see that we have global illumination, light cluster, path tracing, ray tracing settings, recursive rendering, so the ones that we're gonna be covering today are going to be global illumination. Let's go ahead and add it. And once you do that, we're gonna be enabling this and then enabling this option as well. As soon as you do that, you're gonna get all these dots, right? And you're gonna say, well, those dots don't look, doesn't look that good. That's okay, I'll just show you how we can improve that. Now let's go, let's go ahead and go back into the 
sound. So just one thing, as soon as you click on another object here, it's gonna get rid of the, the sequence, but that's okay. We'll just you know focus in this area. Let's go ahead and go back into a volume. And I'm also, I also enabled ray tracing because I wanted to use ray tracing. You guys can see how there's a lot of noise. And we're gonna fix, fix that by enabling the noise. And I'm also gonna check it in here. I'm gonna see that now the noise goes away. You can also use have resolution if you're concerned with you know, performance. You can also enable it here and then enable the, you know, the have resolution. There's also other settings if you want to you know, use a radius, a higher radius, you can also set that up. And then the other thing, you can also override the length of the array. So we can just use, I think I'm just gonna use 10, I think that value. You can also change the quality here if you wanna use performance, you want this to perform well, or if you want to use better quality, you can also you know, inc increase the sample count if you wanna change that value. I think I'm gonna leave it as that. I think that, that it's going to work for what we need. So the other setting that we're also gonna need, and just so you know, just as soon as we enable these, Global Illumination, it just makes it look a lot better. Another, another setting that I'm also going to be using if we go in here and search for ambient occlusion, go ahead and enable that. And I'm gonna get closer in here so we, we, got, we can actually see how ambient occlusion works. And I'm gonna enable ray tracing. And right now we can't really see anything, but as soon as I start incrementing this, you're gonna see how the ambient occlusion is working on some of these areas. And maybe we zoom out a little bit. And you guys can see how that works. So ambient occlusion, and let's actually enable the ray tracing one and move this value up and down. It's gonna be a little bit different, right? We're using ray tracing. You can also, if you're concerned with the noise on the ambient occlusion area, areas, you can also enable it here and also enable it here. You can see how that gets getting rid of the noise. And perhaps if we wanted to just, you know, change, maybe open this door. So we can also see, I think that door, yeah, I think we have some space because it animates and it goes all the way here. So I wanna show you how, that, how the inside looks. And then let's go back into a volume and we can change that, you know, that value one more time. You can see how the edges in here are getting some of that ambient occlusion. Okay, so let's go ahead and add another one. So in this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use contact shadows. So let's go ahead and go into contact shadows. And we're gonna be taking a look at the shadows in here, right? And I'm gonna enable it and then just set it. But there's nothing really happening, even if I just change this, it's like the shadows are like not doing anything. The reason why they're not doing anything is because we also need to target the, the actual lights. So if I were to go to the lighting, and we can just enable, open this up, open this up. And these are gonna be any, all the lights in here. If I were to move these, you're gonna see that those lights go up. It's gonna be these components. And I know there's spotlights on every single one of these. I think I spent too much time looking at this scene. And then I'm gonna select them all. I'm gonna get closer to this area and I wanna show you how this changes. So to, to be able to use contact shadows and ray trace shadows, you're gonna be using the ray trace component in here. And as soon as, I, as soon as you do that, I'm also going to be using the contact shadows in here. Let's go ahead and enable it, and then enable ray trace shadows. So you're gonna see how that changes, right? If I were to enable these or disable them. You can also change the shadows if you want a better resolution. We can also change the better resolution, but the contact shadows was what I was concerned with. So what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and finish this up and I'm gonna show you how it looks when we run it. So now that we have those, let's go ahead and go back into my scene settings and then my volume. So we have shadows in here. You have different settings for the distance scale factor. If we wanna change that, you can also change it. And it looks like that doesn't really do anything, at least on that, in that end. But you can change some of these settings. The sample count, you can also, also change it. We can change the quality. And then I believe if you go high, you can also change. I don't know why I can't really change this setting for some reason. Controls the number of samples that HDRP uses. And we can enable mix and max distance. And I think we just do custom, I think it's fine. And I don't think, oh, there we go. If you use custom, you can then change the sample count. I'm also gonna just use, let's go ahead and set it to medium. I think that's fine. Let's go ahead and add another, another option that I want to show you. We're also going to be using recursive rendering. And let's go ahead and enable recursive rendering and enable this setting. I'm gonna see that everything is going to, it's going to kind of disappear and then reappear. You can also change the, you know, the size of the, of the, of the ray in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add, I'm gonna add a sphere so that I can show you how recursive rendering works. Add a sphere here and then perhaps, I think I add it all the way back, back there. Let's go ahead and move it here and put it into place. I have a sphere maybe right here. 
And then what I'll do is I'm going to add a couple of materials. Let's actually add just one material and we can reuse it. This one is going to be my, we can just say default sphere. Perfect. And then when it comes to materials, if you want to use the ray tracing pass, you got to change the rendering pass from default to ray tracing. So I'm going to enable that. And I'm also going to change this all the way up because I want it to be metallic. And it looks like I created another one by mistake, but that's fine. We'll just delete the original. And then just use the one that I just duplicated. There we go. And then I'll just drag and drop this component to the, to the actual sphere. We can also add it if we want it to the floor. I think I'm going to do a different one for the ground. So let's do the full ground. And I'm also going to, and I did that again. I think I'm pressing Control D. That's fine. And then what I'll do here, also just add it to the floor. You can see that that right of the bat is giving us reflections and we can see that it's kind of, it's recursive. Like if you guys know what recursive is in programming, it's like it keeps applying and applying depending on the objects. So for instance, like if you look at the sphere, it's not only showing you the sphere reflected, but also the reflections within the sphere. So that's why, you know, the term recursive works. As soon as, as, soon, as soon as the condition get hit, the recursive algorithm stops. Okay, so we have that in there. We can probably just duplicate it and then just have another one here. You can see how we have this sphere. Could probably just resize this one, put this one right here. So that's what recursive rendering is going to give you. It's going to give you the, you know, reflective material on the ground. It's going to be recursive and it just looks super cool. So I can probably just put it right on the side because I know Adam is going to be walking through that area. Okay, so now that we have that and we have the shadows, so let's go ahead and look at Adam itself because we're going to have to make some changes to Adam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit play and then show you what we have so far. And I also want you to select the, the timeline because I want to, I want you to see how, how it works as soon as we have the shots in here. So we have the first shot completed, second shot completed. I'm going to go to the third shot and then Adam is basically going to disappear. But I'm going to show you how this looks if we get right about, I think right about here. And then perhaps we can make this a little bit bigger. Okay, let's take a look at the shadows, right? And if we go into our, our scene settings and in our volume, and I think I have, okay, so I want to make sure, there we go. Let me go back into my volume. Okay, so if I were to disable the contact shadows and let's see if that shows, we go ahead and get a little closer, perhaps in here. And if I were to enable, so it looks like actually those ones are getting applied by the spotlight. So if I go here and select the spotlights, and I were to disable, there we go. So that gives you, you know, how the how the spot, the actual ray tracing contact shadows are working. I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. And let's go ahead and look at this guy, which is gonna be the robot. And I were to uncheck that. So it just, it looks different, right? It's, it's a different look on the contact shadows when we're doing ray tracing. So this is set ray tracing on, ray tracing off. Okay, so let's look at the, the actual spheres when when Adam is actually walk, walking towards the entrance. So I'm going to go ahead and select it here. And you're going to see that Adam at some point is going to show. And wait a minute, why is Adam not showing? And not only not showing on the sphere, but it's also not showing on the ground. Well, we have the spheres that are showing, but Adam itself is not showing. And the reason why it's not showing is because we have to use something called dynamic geometry. So I'm going to show you how to, how to fix that. So let's go ahead and close this and I think I can just select Adam. There we go. So there's going to be three different shots that Adam is going to appear. It's going to be on this one, on this one, and also on this one. So if we look at Adam, Adam has the geometry on these components. And if we go to the geometry, you're going to see the skin mesh render. If you go into the ray tracing settings, we're going to be enabling dynamic geometry. And as soon as you do that, that this is going to look a lot better, right? Now we have Adam showing in there. We can see his head. We can see his entire body. But as soon as he goes into another shot, he's going to disappear. So we need to do that on every single one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and look for Adam. Adam is also, I believe, on this one, characters. And then global, Adam group, and then Adam, and then also geometry. And let's go ahead and do all these components as well. And I'm also going to do dynamic geometry there. And now that we have that shot completed and we have the second shot completed, let's go ahead and do the last shot going to be characters here and then also enable this 
and then also look at the atom shot geometry expand this and then just go ahead and do it on all of these ones and then we'll go ahead and replay the scene so that you guys can see the difference that this is going to make okay let's go ahead and do this one more time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the master timeline and then we're going to start from the very beginning okay let's go ahead and hit play And you're gonna see that Adam, let me actually make this a little bit bigger. See, Adam is showing on the spheres. And it's also showing on the ground because the ground is now using the dynamic geometry and everything, everything shows in there. Okay, so that covers that up. So that's how you can set up the recursive rendering and how we can set you know, the dynamic geometry on Adam so that that information also basically gets retraced so that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know.